morning, everyone. Welcome to church on such a glorious Sunday. We're so glad you're here, and all of you at home or wherever you may be watching on uh, social media, it's great that we're all together. So we're going to begin our, begin our service right now by singing our opening chant, We Are the Harvest. Welcome, everyone, to all of you here in the sanctuary. It's so great to see all of you. And for those of you at home on Facebook and Zoom, welcome. We are delighted that you are all here with us. Now, I know those of you in the sanctuary have already silenced your phone, but if you haven't, this is a great time to do that. Okay. So let's join together in prayer. Take a nice deep breath. And let it out, knowing how blessed we are today here to be together. Reconnecting to source, reconnecting to each other. So blessed to know that this source always has our back. That source is love and joy and connection. Love is our family. Love is light. This is all God. And I know for myself that I am absolutely part of God. I have no doubt. And that makes it easy for me to recognize and know that for all of you, to know that for the musicians, to know that for the tech people, to know that for all of us, this community, to know for sure that that is Reverend Sydney's truth, and to know that whatever she speaks here today, we take it home. We feel it in every word, in the energy, in the vibe that is only hers, that belongs to all of us because we are one. We are one and we take it home with us. We live it because we are so blessed to live it. We are so blessed to, blessed to know it and be aware that this is our truth. We bring it home to our families, our friends, our work, wherever it is in life that we go from this moment forward. And that feels good. That is the truth and that is the blessing. And I am so grateful to absolutely know it. So I release my word into the law and so it is. And together we say,
please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let's join in singing our congregational song, What a Wonderful World. Okay, we're going to meditate for the next five minutes. I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes.
This is one of those moments when all that really matters is crystal clear. We are woven together by whatever threads of life that have brought us here. We are stripped of all our layers. We are getting to the core. Tell me something real and nothing more. Cause I don't know why. And I Welcome. I am Reverend Sidney. I'm the assistant minister here at North Hollywood. And I am so fortunate that I get to be here with you and that you know, you're tied to your seats and I get to just pontificate because you know how much I enjoy that. Um, <laughs> that song is powerful. There's a line from the textbook, from the Science of Mind textbook, where Ernest Holmes talks about us living in the ever-present here and the everlasting now. The ever-present, this is ever-presently noisy. <laughs> the ever-present <laughs> ever here and the everlasting now. And it gives such great context to the way we often do not live our lives because we will, we will past, we will future, and we seldom come back to this thing of presencing. And listening to the messages from now, noticing and observing what we might need to know right here and right now. And it's, it's a fascinating thing because so much of our lives are created and interpreted, perceived by what has happened in the past. And yet we are always these now beings 
in this present moment. We are always now beings in the present moment. So will we choose to carry that past into this in order to define who we are, in order to create who we are, or to defend against who we think we are? Because many of us have unacknowledged or unrecognized beliefs about who we are. Or there's another way of doing it, which is we are so intent on what what might happen, our plans for tomorrow, our plans for next year. You know, we are absolutely in this society, we are cultivated and trained to have a one-year plan, a two-year plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. Holy cow, what about a moment plan, an, an in-this-moment plan? And that's why we, we do a lot of spiritual practice, because it is in the breathing and observing, noticing our breath, right here and right now, that we get to come into this place, into this time, and hear, notice, and take in the information that infinite wisdom is trying to give us. St. Augustine wrote, many, what, hundreds of years ago, um, I don't, what, the 1200s, the 1300s, that order is heaven's first law. Order is heaven's first law. And if you put that together with this idea that we find the kingdom of heaven within, not there, but the kingdom of heaven is within, then that's where we get one of these fundamental qualities of infinite intelligence of God, which is order, divine order, not ridiculous chaos, not fear, not uh, distraction. Um, and I'm good at distraction, by the way. I'm really, really good. I like to say I'm the poster child for monkey mind meditation. <laughs> I even have a little stuffed monkey and I, because I had to make friends with my monkey. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm a Labrador retriever. Shiny. It's like that squirrel. So, and I think that we do that so much. And it, what happens is when we anchor in the distractions, which it's okay to notice. It's important to see the signs and to see life and to observe it. But what happens is we miss the deeper inspiration, the deeper information. So there's a line, there's a quote that says, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. But the real meaning of that line, the real meaning of that quote is that all of us are called, but few of us are listening. All of us are called but few of us are listening. So are you in? Are you listening? <laughs> are you one of the ones who thinks that only a few are chosen to understand or live a life that goes beyond uh, what I call survival to thrival and celebrating? I have been considering that there, ha there seems to be this whole spectrum around God. You know, we, we get triggered with that word. I want you to set aside your trigger for a moment because I will, it's a church. I use the word God. I, you know, I don't know how else to say it. It's a church. I use that word. But I come around to an idea of good or glorious organized design. It is that. So this, it, we have the spectrum of belief in and, and our participation with God. And it, it is fascinating. Where are you on the spectrum? of God and spirit. You know, at one end we have this enthusiastic, I'm all in, absolutely, sign me up. I, I heart the God, right? I am there. The other end, we have the ones who sound like politicians being interviewed about whether or not they use marijuana. Well, you know, I tried it once, it just didn't work for me. So, you know, it, it, I, it just didn't do anything for me. So I'm just not into that, him, her. I'm not into God. Then in the middle of this God spectrum, we have um, the ones who are kind of meh, meh. I'm spiritual, not religious. And then there are all of the gradations in between that. When what we teach here in the science of mind and in new thought is that you are already God in expression. You already are. And whether or not you agree or disagree with the idea of God's existence, and I wanna say that most of us have the disagreement because we have an old God, your divine nature and your sacred identity are actually not up for debate or negotiation. I, you've already been given that. You are already that because you are part of that infinite, wondrous, magnificent spirit that is creator and created, source and substance. So 
not up for debate whether or not you're divine, but absolutely up for conscious participation. Absolutely. So like it or not, you are a creation of spirit. <sighs> and that means that what is true about God is absolutely true about you. Now that's a lot to take in if you've never heard that or if you've been raised with the idea that you're not divine, that you are not sacred, that you are not magnificent. Perhaps someone told you long ago, and this is where we have those unrecognized beliefs because often we don't really give them um, the kind of in, uh, interrogation we should. But we have these beliefs that someone might have given to us once that said, you know, you're not all that special. Whoa, you're not that much. And yet we are all, all, all God. We are all God. And yeah, we are much. We are very much. We can argue about our innate divinity or we can get with the program. Let's get with the program. You know, we teach that God is not a... Uh, a, a personality or a moody, hormonal, capricious, angry, dysfunctional old white bearded guy who has clearly fallen off his meds. We do not teach that God. We teach a much bigger idea of God, not a God of personality, but a presence that is personalized by each of us, by every one of us. We are individualizations of that presence, of that God. We don't teach that God is a power that wants to control us, but that actually seeks to fulfill us, to fulfill us. And that's a much different idea, right? I really prefer that concept. Um, mystical writer Richard Rohr offers this mantra, and there are times I have just sat all day coming back to it, coming back to it, and I was working with it this morning as I was preparing to come in. My image of God creates me. My image of God creates me. And what we do is we create God in the image of, of what we have reference to, which is the people around us. You know, often if we, uh, I've heard it said that we create God in the image of whatever our most influential parent was, is. And so if someone, if you had a father or a mother who was very influential in your life, and that can be because they were loving and completely accepting, nurturing, and blessing you, or the polar opposite, we tend to look at God and say, well, that's how God is. That must be, because that was the first authority figure we had. Whoever raised you, that's going to be your model for God, often. So as adults, as spiritual adults, we get to choose. We can fire that God. Send God to the sidewalk, send God walking, and come back to, uh, come into a greater idea of God, a greater, a greater limitless, magnificent, loving energy that only knows how to be magnificent, loving, and energetic. I have never been able to connect with the phrase supreme deity, but I like the phrase supreme being beingness. That's because we are all here to supremely and fully be part of the sacredness or that deity of life. Our old ideas have to be interrogated. And, and it's not just about God, it's about everything. We, you know, it's really important to begin to question, is that true? Is that true for me? Is that real? Is that real for me? And you know, we have many beliefs that are comfortable, they're familiar, and yet it, it, we need to examine to see if they're still in alignment with our emergent selves, our emergent selves. Ernest Holmes wrote, creation is always beginning but never ending. The slightest thought of intelligence sets power and motion through the law producing a corresponding thing. Things may come and things may go, but creation goes on forever. And what we're talking about here is spiritual law. Now, if this is something that's hard for you to wrap your head around because you haven't heard this phrase, or you don't know about it, you might be new to this whole idea, I just want to let you know that all of the laws that govern this universe were present before we discovered them. They were present and operational and active long before we discovered them. Electricity was there before we discovered it and knew how to harness it. Gravity existed long before we understood what that meant. All of those principles, and it's the same thing with spiritual law. It's that same idea. It is that idea of, it is done unto me as I believe. 
It is done unto me as I believe. And when we can consciously look at what our beliefs are and recognize whether or not they're healthy and positive and nourishing or not, we get to put a new belief in there. We get to do it. Who's making up the rules of this life anyway? I, I mean, I'm going to say I am. I'm going to say you are. And if you haven't yet, take charge. Do it. Make it up. And that's a lot of what we do in life is just make it up. Come on, if you know how to do this, no, I don't. Make it up. Just make it up. So the quantum nature of God, as you and me, includes not just this physical evolution. And yeah, listen, I am all on board with the posable thumbs. And I think that's great. And I'm, I'm glad I can walk upright on two feet as opposed to, you know, um, <laughs> down like sc scraping down here with the knuckles. But more than that, the evolution of our thought and our willingness to rise up in celebration of our spiritual magnificence, those are the avenues that we need to know about now. And that's because when we are truly, truly connected and aware of that and willing to know more and willing to take in the information from life, take in the inspiration, take in that higher wisdom that surrounds and fills us, then we get to orient our lives according to that which is so much better. You know, um, we all have our GPS on our phones. Isn't it much better to know that it's working and that you are orienting according to a true north, a spiritual north? It's, that's our lives. You are the Siri in your life. Um, so <laughs> Ernest Holmes wrote, there's always a power ready to help those who harmonize with it. God can express through us only as far as we will manifest. In other words, that infinite spirit that is life seeks expression through us, but we have to listen and we have to agree with our infinite possibility. Now, this doesn't mean you have to go from zero to 90 like that, but it does mean, are we willing to consider another way? Are we willing to consider a different idea of who we are? Are we willing to consider our magnificence? The question I keep coming back to in, in my own daily spiritual practice is, will I say yes to that divine urge? Is today the day I say yes? Will I say yes in a greater way than yesterday? What is the, what is the yes? What is the, what is the invitation? And the invitation is that voice within which whispers, grow, grow, grow. Or am I going to withhold participation because I'm orienting myself according to an old paradigm of belief? of who I think I am or am not. Um, perhaps a belief that says life is just something that happens to you and you better be ready. You better fix it yourself. You better defend against it. You better be ready. And you better get ready to worry because, by the way, there's a lot to worry about. So many of us have that belief going on. That is not how I want to orient my life. I don't know about you, but I refuse to do that. I really, really do. I want to orient according to this great spiritual compass of infinite possibility. So the title of my talk is God Called. Are you in? <laughs> and if you've ever worked in an office or if you're just even at home and somebody tries to reach you, and, and it's sort of this thing. It's, and by the way, I'm not reading text. I have this because it's a big clock that I can see and know how long I'm speaking. So it's not like I'm going, oh my god, really? Did he do that? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, we did. Um, no, but it's like, hello, oh, Terry, it's God. Are you in? <laughs> and how do we know that God is calling? I think we'd all really like to have like big obvious displays, right? Big obvious displays that this is a message from God, a clap of thunder, a big booming voice from the clouds above. An announcement from CNN that interrupts your regular broadcast. Um, how about a text from God? What if the call from God, though, looks more like a butterfly fluttering by or an empty milk carton that someone put back in the fridge? You know, it's all God. It's all God. And we get to choose how we are going to perceive that. We get to choose that meaning. We get to listen to that. So if it's not a huge clap of thunder but is a forecast of rain, perhaps... You should check your tires. You know, sometimes these messages from the divine aren't change your life today, but you know, you might want to clean your windshield. It, it would help you with your driving. 
And it could be the universe is trying to get our attention with a, with a smile from a stranger, a birthday card from a friend, or a song suddenly popping into your head. Our availability to God is in the mindfulness we bring to everyday life. It's in our mindfulness. And in lives such as we all have, which are so easily oh, seduced and pulled over and distracted, so easily distracted, maintaining and cultivating and growing a sense of mindfulness and listening and observation, I think is really, really vital. That's why we do so much spiritual practice because we are practicing listening. We are practicing just being in that present moment, that here and now. You know, the, the divine isn't sitting around, you know, planning to annoy you, but the fundamental harmony of life will certainly, most certainly respond when you and I are in disharmony. And that's what's really interesting. Um, since it's true we can grow through love or grow through pain, most of us don't wake up to that divine tap on the shoulder and, and it gets a little <clears throat> until we finally get hit by that, as we like to call it, that spiritual two by four upside the head, right? And for some of us, it's a spiritual four by four or bigger because we need a big whack on the side of the head. Oh, oh. For example, my physical health is a really good indicator, a really good indicator of my willingness to pay attention to the infinite wisdom within me. I can always tell when I have fallen out of alignment with my innate wholeness because my energy, my, the amount of energy I have will be out of alignment. My freedom and flexibility will be out of alignment. And it might even be subtle. It could be as simple as stubbing my toe, but there's something there that's calling me back. Come back, come back, come back. Hello, God calling, are you in? Are you in? And what's, what's fascinating is if, if I don't pay attention to those little messages, they do get louder. They really do get louder. And like that, sub to that stub toe or the sore muscle, life will get more obvious and more insistent. Have you noticed? Just take a moment and look at the areas of your life that seem to be like big things, big things. Did they start off as small things, perhaps? Did they start off as, as ideas or just sparks of, hmm, that's interesting, and then move on? That's, that's something that happens. It happens to me. Um, you know, that original angelic tap on my shoulder can very quickly become a big pain in my aspirations if I ignore those intuitions and hunches. So over the years, I've learned that my invitations, and I, I can't speak for you, but where I, I know that God is trying to get my attention, and not this God up here, the, the ticked off God, but the divine intelligence, that glorious organized design, my invitations to be more, to change and to grow, will almost always show up in one of three areas. My physical condition, my financial conditions, and in my relationships, primary relationship with my husband. A physical issue for me is an invitation to change and to grow. A financial issue for me is an invitation to change and to grow. And a relationship invitation for me is an invitation for my husband to change and to grow. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah? <clears throat> yeah. I knew I wasn't alone. All of life is here to support and love us if we will dare to perceive it, perceive it as being so. Life isn't here to to contradict, to trip us up, and to hurt us. Life is here to love us, to nourish us, to support us, to be part of that expansion, that ever, ever unfolding glory of creation, because there's only creation. Creation always happens, always happens, and continues to happen. Einstein said the only thing that really matters is whether or not we believe the universe is friendly. Because if we can orient ourselves to that, we have an entirely more holistic, peace-filled way of living. I believe the universe is friendly. The more I intend love, the more I experience love. 
The more I intend peace, the more I have peace. You know, scientists who study quantum, quantum physics learned a long time ago that that which is being observed is affected by the observer. You know, when you use a, a um, see, now I'm just going to make stuff up. If you, <laughs> whatever microscope it is, and you can see the neutrons and the electrons, nah, 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 nah. but as they are being observed, their pattern of movement changes. It changes. And it's the same thing for you and me. As we begin to observe God, as we begin to observe life, as we begin to understand the impact our thinking, our beliefs, known or unknown, influence life, that pattern of movement shifts. If we extrapolate all of that into what we teach, science of mind, new thought, it is done unto us as we believe. It is done unto us. And the more we observe, it's not about paying attention to what we call the bad stuff so that more bad will happen, but it's so that we can wake up to whatever has been an issue, a problem, or a condition, so it's no longer biting us in the aspiration. It's so that we can pay attention and know that all of life is here for us. So what are we really believing? What are, what are you and I really believing? What's unrecognized? What's unacknowledged? And how is it showing up? And it will show up. And the, you know, Ernest Holmes said this too, you will always know what you believe by seeing what's going on in your life. He said it in a, a much more articulate way, much more poetic. But for me, it's if I look out here and I see a mess, it's because I've got a mess going on in here. Not judgment on that, by the way. Not, oh my God, I'm so ashamed I did that. Oh, I was so stupid. How could that happen? No, it's none of that. It's, wow, there's some issues out here. This relationship seems to have some, some tension and some, some problems with it. What do I need to clarify here about divinity, about my own divinity and my partner's divinity? What do I need to know about this? Am I willing to know a greater idea? Our beliefs about how life will show up, how we will show up, all of that, how life is, are going to create our lives. And it's because we see the lenses through the lenses of our own perception, right? We just see through our own lenses of perception. So are we willing to be available? Are you in, God calling, are you in to a perception of infinite wholeness, of possibility, abundant supply, divine order, synchronicity? And that's really interesting. When we begin to be awake, to really awake to what's going on, we actually can notice that there's a synchronicity. We can connect the dots between our thinking and our lives. We can connect the dots between what's going on here and what was happening or is happening in here. You know, Ernest wrote, all the power there is stands outside of our divine individuality and waits that we shall know it. And it's in that knowing that we bring it into our divine individuality and we individualize it, we personalize it, and now we are channels for that infinite presence, that power that is God, and I don't mean like power like it's overcome something, but that power that moves us to be in integrity with that order that is heaven's first law. You know, the presence and power of God desires a recognition, and this is what is meant, this is what Jesus meant when he said, I stand at the door and knock. He wasn't saying Avon calling or I have Girl Scout cookies to sell. That was the idea of that presence, that Christ presence within is calling, is saying, hey, are you there? Are you in? Are you willing to hear a bigger truth, a greater truth of love, a greater truth of possibility? You know, come on, let's, let's move into this. In that knowing, we become the actualized beings we desire to be. We give voice to possibility. We give voice to the truth of who we are. And when we come to that consciousness, when we come into the consciousness of, avail of availability or being in when God calls, interesting things start to happen. We start to feel more connected, more alive. 
And we begin to realize that we are worthy because we are oriented now by this thing that you might have heard about called that pattern of perfection. The pattern of perfection, the blueprint. We are all sourced, created, and designed from a spiritual blueprint. Now, this isn't like the perfection that says, oh, Sydney's shoes are perfect today, which they are, by the way, if you haven't seen them. Um, it's not that external perfection. It is that order is heaven's first law. And wherever you are, wherever, whoever you are, whatever's going in your life, you are perfect. You are already that perfection because you are here and that vehicle that your body is, is a perfect vehicle for you to be that high and holy idea of God as you. That is absolute spiritual truth. So when we can let curiosity guide us, not shame, not blame, to look at those beliefs that might have been creating stuff in our life. And so the invitation that I want to extend for you or extend to you for this next week is check yourself out. Where are you on the God spectrum? Where are you with that? Are you all in? Are you meh? Are you just not into the possibilities, inspiration, joy, and delight that living fully might bring you? So I want to finish this morning with, it's a, it's a passage from a talk that Howard Thurman, who was a wonderful wisdom teacher and spiritual leader years ago, and also one of the mentors for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I've read passages of this in service here before. And the talk was The Sound of the Genuine. And it really just, it just so connects with me. There is in you something that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. And yet sometimes there is so much traffic going on in your mind, so many different kinds of signals, so many vast impulses flowing through your organism that go back thousands of generations, long before you were even a thought in the mind of creation. And you are buffeted by these. And in the midst of all of this, you have got to find out what your name is, what your name is. Who are you? How does the sound of the genuine come through you? The sound of the genuine is flowing through you. Don't be deceived and thrown off by all the noises that are part even of your dreams, your ambitions, so that you don't hear the sound of the genuine in you because that is the only true guide you will ever have. And if you don't have that, you don't have a thing. You may be famous, you may be whatever the ideals are which are part of this generation, but you know you don't have the foggiest notion of who you are, where you are going, what you want, which is why we cultivate the discipline of listening to the sound of the genuine in yourself. Michael Beckwith would call it the blissipline. The blissipline. So God is calling, are you in? Are you in? Yes. Good. Let's pray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I invite you to just relax into your chair and absolutely be aware that we are in that ever-present here and that everlasting now. Be where your body is. Embrace Embrace this moment. Embrace it as the truth, the truth of who you are, the truth of who we are, for clearly and truly the infinite intelligence that is God has brought each of us here as an expression of itself because we are a necessary part of that tapestry, of that unfoldment, and that each of us here as we listen to that presence, to that power. We are part of the shift, part of the upliftment, part of the raising up of this entire planet. We are that healing. We are the voice of God and expression. We are, we are that which God would have us be if we will say yes to being that. So I tend now for each of us, I intend deeply and fully and lovingly that we recognize and begin to know ourselves as spirit knows us. Perfect in thy sight, beloved, whole, eternal, limitless. 
because that is the truth of our divine nature, that mind that is God, that is our mind, that life that is our life, is that which absolutely lifts us up and shows us our light and the light of everyone around us. And in particular, as we recognize this light and we allow ourselves to be bathed in it and from it and as it, we extend that light beyond ourselves. And anything in our families which may be calling for more light, we know that the light is active there, it is present there. Anything in your world which seems to be calling for more light and more love, to be knowing that God is there, that the activity is going on, that the wisdom is flowing, and that there is a greater idea to be realized, we know that God is active there. And in particular right now, we surround not just this planet, but the whole area of Ukraine and Russia. And we say a prayer with every breath, with every thought that we have about that, knowing that as we pronounce love, love is demonstrated. As we pronounce light, light shows up. As we pronounce that we are willing to be peaceful, peace demonstrates. We take accountability for our own thinking now, knowing that as we unfold into greatness that we already are, that the world identifies with that, and we are able to sing and dance together as the greatness that is so, so, so wanting to show up, so, so, so wanting to be present, expressed, and explored. So I know that this church is blessed. I know that all of us are blessed. I know that all churches are blessed. And so we bless every path to God, every church, every synagogue, every ashram, every mosque, every temple, every possible place where people may be gathered, where two or more might come together in an idea of love and connection. We know that God is there. And we know that a new idea is coming forth. And clearly and truly we know that this idea of spirit, of Holy Spirit, is just another aspect of our own consciousness. And we are willing uh, to let that flow through us and to celebrate it. So how wonderful to know, how wonderful to know, and to accept that this is all already done in the mind of God. It is already so. So with a full and grateful heart, I simply release this word into that spiritual law which predates me, which predates all life. And I let it be so. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. We'll sing it one time. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am as we know abundance, as we practice abundance, as we live in that flow, I know that this world is blessed by that abundance. So I invite you to take your offering and whether it is something that you do online or in that box back there, please say with me as you hold your hand to your heart, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. I am so
step back and I think now I can see Sometimes the things we think we want, well they just aren't meant to be It's starting to come together, it's finally making sense Things happen for a reason, there's nothing left to chance I want to breathe in this life, let it all go Relax, learn to just be breathing in my life. I am all in. And better, they better watch out when I get out there today. <clears throat> yes. So, Melissa Lewis. Thank you. And if you're like me, I will be purchasing music from her this afternoon on melissalewis.net. Thank you to our in-house rock stars, Sam and Karen. And now, if this is your first time at our church, we are so happy you are here. Please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. For all the ways you can make donations to our church, go to nhcrs.org slash give and Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. The meditation begins at 6.50 p.m. and the service at 7 o'clock. Join Reverend Sidney this week as she shares on Season for Nonviolence, Beyond Churchianity, Radical Oneness, and Peace. The 17th century poet Rumi wrote, Out beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I will meet you there. The spiritual path is the path we are on, whether we recognize it or not. Our oneness cannot be denied, broken, or argued out of. The universal presence is bigger than all of us. Will we yield? A grief support group on Zoom, 
This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets today at 1 o'clock on Zoom. And there is still time to sign up for Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, class with Reverend Sidney Steen. This is going to be on Tuesdays from 7 to 9.30 p.m. in person and on Zoom through April 19th. Don't miss out on this brand new, exciting class. You will learn how to apply science of mind principles, practices, and methods to transform your life in the areas of relationships, prosperity, and health. What could be better than that? <laughs> Everyone is welcome. Sign up on our website. The cost is $170. This class counts towards practitioner training. On April 15th, we we'll have a Good Friday service followed by a fundraising dinner. Uh, WWJE, what would Jesus eat? <laughs> a delicious, delicious four course Middle Eastern niche dinner. Tickets for the dinner are 35 and are available on our website and on the patio. Calling all kids, parents, and friends. On Easter Sunday, April 17th, we will have an egg hunt for our youth on the church lawn immediately following the 9.45 a.m. service. All kids are welcome, so I should be seeing all of you. And be sure to invite your family and friends. If you would like to donate filled plastic eggs, please bring them to the office. Thank you. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And that is all of the announcements. So why don't we all stand up now and we'll do our peace song. <laughs> Of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Let's go get coffee. Come on, come on.